Hey everyone and welcome back to Amplify Agile. I'm Kiara Zapanta and in today's episode we're going to discuss what labor financial management is, the benefits of it, some best practices and more. To discuss this topic with me today is Konstantin Popov, Head of Strategic Portfolio and Financial Management with C Prime. Um, so Konstantin, it's great to have me, having you on today. Um, can you please give our audience a quick introduction of yourself? Thanks Kiara. Uh, I've been in project portfolio management for about 25 years. Um, I have uh, my team specializing on uh, enterprise strategy to team level execution, uh, leveraging an integrated uh, solution based on an Aptio platform. Awesome. Great to have you on today. So diving into the topic of labor financial management, um, can you share what exactly this is and what roles benefit from it the most? Absolutely. Uh, so the labor financial management is our ability to uh, to fund uh, our teams in this uh, time of change. A lot of things around us are changing, um, uh, cloud initiatives, the business agility initiatives, uh, they're all changing the way that we work. And they have two things in common. They cut across organizational and cost center boundaries. As a result, we see that a lot of our customers are transitioning to a fixed capacity allocation or block funding. Uh, and the ability to be able to change your uh, financial processes and your labor processes to account for that are critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about the business challenges? You know, what are the challenges that most organizations or the industry is struggling with that LFM addresses? I think uh, the biggest challenge uh, of this misalignment is uh, the fact that our uh, traditional ERP processes around uh, uh, labor financial management are based on cost center project-based uh, processes. Um, so that is the biggest challenge. Uh, and we need to be able to address it and change it to make sure that we're now aligned to this new way of working. Mm -hmm. Okay. And does like how does LFM increase stronger collaboration across the organization, you know, from leadership to teams to an individual level? I think if you look at the end-to-end -end value chain, we need to establish an ability from the very top of the enterprise, the office of the CFO, to provide a high-level financial guidelines uh, that we can uh, leverage up to want to deconstruct into budgets and align all of our labor to these budgeted initiatives. And, and then uh, moving this uh, data downstream, we will move it into up to target process where we can start to identify specific initiatives that will be funded and uh, uh, based on different constraints, um, largely around funding, roles, skill set, and technical dependencies, we can establish how much work can we really accomplish, what can we start and, and when. And then by breaking this farther into backlogs and pushing them into team level tools uh, and collecting the uh, actuals, uh, labor actuals from the execution and multiplying it by rates, we can really see how well we're doing financially on a monthly basis, where we are against the, the, the plan. So if you look at to end, it's uh, starting with the office of the CFO, moving into the folks that are allocating budgets in IT finance, then we are dealing with or capability challenges, how many role-based, skill-based resources are we going to need to uh, to get this work done. And as we're executing this work, we're really managing how well are we utilizing our labor and, uh, and and what is actually the cost of that labor so it can contribute to the total cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's great collaboration across the board then. So um, I know we talked about like the challenges that organizations face that LFM addresses, but what are some of the potential challenges or roadblocks that some may face when they are, you know, like actually implementing LFM and any tips and tricks that you can share on how they can overcome them? I guess the context is extremely important. You cannot uh, adopt uh, um, uh, this process by leveraging the existing tools that you have. It is very difficult. We work with customers every day that are trying to repurpose their existing project portfolio management systems that are built on an aggregation of cost and schedule uh, to accommodate this new way of working. Um, and for the most of them, it is not moving well. You really need to find uh, the tooling that can support this future way of working. Um, a lot of our customers are moving to hybrid models, not truly agile. So having a tool that can re represent uh, your project-based and product-based work and a single, single pane of glass, visualize all of your work and resources 
uh, that are done in both systems is extremely important. This is best accomplished if you can synchronize your cadence and majority of our customers in a hybrid environment synchronize around quarters and if you synchronize around the taxonomy. Uh, and because of the widespread uh, use of uh, Jira and Azure DevOps, we see that even in the project world, there is a, uh, at the delivery, at the execution level, uh, the taxonomy is epic feature user story. So as long as you align the two, you can visualize that work in your hybrid uh, enterprise portfolio management systems. Mm -hmm. um, and can you share, you know, like how organizations can begin to implement LFM, whether they are early in or mature in their agile journey? Yes, I think uh, uh, just just looking at your process around um, uh, the intake process, right? How do I start to plan? I am taking in portfolio initiatives and I start to plan, hey, how many resources of a certain type am I going to need? And um, as you uh, as you move through it, you start to build a point of view. Where do I stand in terms of the uh, requests for labor with my actual capacity? And then it's a discussion, uh, you know, do we not do certain work and just accommodate what we have the resources for? Do we work with our ecosystem of partners to bring in additional capacity? But that initial visibility into all the work that is coming in the funding that is available for that work in terms of capacity, and not only overall capacity, but capacity by role, by skill set, and ability to plan the work that way is extremely important because that gives you the visibility. Not only I funded a thousand people and I can deliver this work with a thousand people, but maybe I need very specialized skill set for 20% of my labor that I don't currently have. The reality is if you don't have that view, you will not be able to get to that work, even though on paper you have the resources. Mm -hmm. And can you share, you know, like any success stories from any of your clients or customers that did implement this and they had like good positive feedback or any like success stories with this? I think over the last uh, three years, we have worked with uh, over 90 different customers and some sort of a resource and capacity management, the labor financial management has been an extremely big piece for all of them. Um, uh, we we actually have some customers that are coming in uh, at the at this hybrid portfolio uh, planning piece with, hey, I do not know who is working where. Can you help me with rostering? We have other people that are getting more mature. It's exactly the use case. I need you to build me a trend line based on the work that I'm doing. How many, how many people in specific roles with specific skill sets I am going to need over the course of the next two years to deliver on my critical commitments? Um, so we've implemented this process in uh, you know Fortune 5 energy company. We've implemented this in uh, in in large banks, uh, large insurance companies. Uh, education and publishing companies. Um, we've implemented this for the customers that have 100 uh, licenses of target process and the customers that have thousands uh, of licenses of the target process. So it's applicable across a variety of industries and, uh, uh, and in different organizations of different sizes. That's awesome. So you did mention after your target process. I do want to know, and like our last question for today, where do you think a solution, software solution like target process can help with labor financial management? Oh, I believe that target, that target process as a hybrid uh, st strategic portfolio management system is the, is the, uh, is the glue, right? Is that key component that helps you connect the dots in terms of I am going to bring in all of the work across the enterprise. I'm going to bring in all of my labor across the enterprise. I am going to establish the prioritization mechanism. I'm going to be able to align it with uh, with my OKR structure. Basically, I don't have any work. I can categorize my work items where I know what is run, what is change agenda. I can now start to report on what is the cost of my run and my change agenda. I can uh, work through it and figure out by categorizing my work items as capex opex and by categorizing my labor as employees and contractors and connecting this to my gl and pulling appropriate charge codes i can tell you exactly what is capital what is expense mm -hmm. uh, if i am uh, if i have built my roadmaps 
in a way that I can see work items and they have been categorized for one, two, three, four, five quarters, however long you have on your roadmap. And I know what type of labor will be working on them. I can actually start to bring in the financial forecast back into the world of the business agility to say, hey, here is how much things are going to cost me. Here is who is going to be working on them. And here is what, what the CapEx OpEx uh, by quarter. Uh, and then as we execute and write, it gives us a very good uh, ability to manage variance. Awesome. All right. Well, that was great insight. Um, And thank you so much, Constantine, for joining us today and sharing your insight with us. Um, So everyone, if you have any questions, please do feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below. And please do stay tuned for our next episode.